Well, now I know how Columbus felt when he finally hit land. Hasn't been easy, but the worst part is over. Like passing a kidney stone. I've arrived at my destination. <clears throat> yes, I paid a price, of course. What's going on in the sun is reminiscent of uh, years past. Lots of energy. This uh, magnetos magnetosphere simulation shows you the energy. And when it's in belts, you're talking electrons. Where's all these electrons coming from? And then on, you know, the instruments that have measured geomagnetic storms, we, we had one that was off the scales, but only in a single area. That's kind of weird. So we look at the, the particles, and we see a high, high number of particles. And, and the speed did not decrease so much when those particles reach maximum density, and they're supposed to. We look at the magnetosphere to try to understand why we would have high, high particle counts with higher wind speeds. Generally, the, the denser something is, the slower it runs. I mean, that's just the laws of the universe. So we try to run a sim simultaneous running of these magnetospheres. And we see a constant presence of energy. No matter what the two magnetospheres on the left are doing, the one on the right almost always shows rings, new rings of energy, sometimes three at the bow compression zone. We do get some bow compressions, and yes, associated with some uptick in seismicity. But we do see spiraling of the wind in the tail stream. We see breaking of the interplanetary magnetic field uh, coming from electrons um, being disturbed. So what would disturb the electrons coming from the sun? Well, protons will do it, but proton levels are at background levels only. Again, we see ejections into the tail stream, like a cannon. These are not causing compressions of our magnetosphere. These are actually hmm, expand the magnetosphere with these balls that shoot out into the tail stream. And th those are electrons. Once again, they repel each other. So you, you have all this energy without a compression, meaning that we're seeing a lot of electrons. That's just basically, I mean, any way you look at it, no matter how you analyze it, electrons, 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 disturbing the magnetic field lines, both in the tail stream and in the interplanetary magnetic field and those are the electrons coming from the sun. So we see spiraling in the tail stream, usually indicative of a second directional flow of particles. But, I mean, the way these particles are ejected um, in the tail stream with such regularity, I mean, it almost reminds me of a turtle uh, giving birth to an egg you know the egg shoot expands and the, the egg shoots out that's just probably a really poor poor analogy so we're going to put together the entire transit of venus i haven't had time to see how this alignment finished but i, I mean i know how it finished it finished similar to how it started CMEs, yes, a quick and sudden earthquake uptick uh, during these alignments. And again, the greatest activity, both on the sun and on our tectonic plates, happens just before and just after these alignments. Sometimes the direct alignment almost seems to stabilize things for a brief second. But we do see anomalies on these on these simulations. Actually, they're actually actual photographs. The chronographs on the left is more detailed. 
picks up a lot of the higher energies, x-rays mainly. But we get to see, we get to see uh, how these alignments trigger before the alignment and how they trigger after the alignments additional solar activity and increase in solar activity. So we'll put together this whole transit to show you that the pattern plays out every time. This is a weather satellite of the North Pacific and or North Central Pacific. California's upper right, Baja right. And we see two spiral lane systems, but there's, they're vastly different. The one on the right is devoid of water. And when we look at the United States as a whole, you can see that dry system off to the left is actually pulling water from the equatorial belt. So we have a dry system so powerful forming over water with no water. We go to the south, we see the equatorial belt of water. It does exist momentarily, but look off the coast of Peru and Argentina. That black color is epic, epic surface temperatures. Ep epic temperatures. And it's amazing. And of course, go back and you look in the further south, the, the south jet stream is starting to look like the north jet stream. But this is the one that shows you how the um, systems are pulling water off the equator and taking that hot water and throwing it, throwing it nice and high up towards the Arctic. Oh, well, that's what melts the ice along with the solar radiation. Again, we're looking at the south and we see dual systems actually you know maybe even three systems that are reminiscent of the northern hemisphere so we're starting to lose our jet stream in the southern hemisphere now as well and we see over australia some of the same activity we see off the coast of california mainly water not being allowed to make it to the mainland coming in off the oceans in utah you see up the top uh, clear examples of geoengineering uh, straight lines x's and triangles in the sky ahead of a weather front so and these these are old by now um, I had taken these oh about a week ago uh, trying to get out information to you um, as I was traveling but it's just virtually impossible to take three hours out of your day and make a video uh, you know the video requires research requires time and production requires edits and that's a part that i'm weakest on because i'm trying to get this stuff out in a time sensitive manner but you know here is just an example of what's going on and we are going to be doing weather satellites daily so you can track these systems uh, you know the move gets in the way but we're getting settled and things are looking pretty good right now. I do have to admit, um, California, um, they are price gouging people at the grocery store and at the gas pump. Uh, there's no cause for anything to be double in price than the already high prices just in the states that are just east of California. We know California has higher cost of living, higher taxes, whatever, higher anything. It's not double. Uh, you know, the cost of living isn't double. The cost that California plays uh, for its goods and services and oil and gas is not double. But yet, the price we pay is doubled over the, the states that are just east of California. Now, here we have a system coming into Vancouver. Um, notice how it just suddenly gets flat with it was once sphere spherical and how um, there's a high rate of speed on the southern spiral it doesn't look like a circular system anymore now does it so it's very very deceiving and they'll call this stream of air the jet stream but it's actually a the arm to a vortex uh, kind of like a spiral but it's hard to see the spiral when all of a sudden 
things make a 90 degree turn in your atmosphere which is very very bizarre but we do see great influences upon this system that deform it that change its direction that split the system and cause things that you normally would think defy the laws of physics so we look at Canada now get a better picture of what's happening coming into Vancouver um, and we see a dual spiral system but the rotation on the system on the right is so strong that the downward thrust the you know from the 12 o'clock to the 9 o'clock to the 7 o'clock to the 6 o'clock position there's a downward spiral because this is a wheel that's turning and it's turning counterclockwise so you're seeing a huge thrust in pieces of moisture that had been stripped off thrown down through the heart of our food belt and into Texas uh, a, a cold blast just like uh, we've seen in the past and those cold blasts are those excuse me those cold blasts are um, actually hurting your food supply because they're under reporting the cold temps They'll t if they tell you it's going to be 38 degrees plan on it being 28 degrees you can't not you cannot let that go you have to protect against frost even when they tell you there's not a frost I don't know how else to emphasize that even further but all over the globe we're seeing we're seeing stuff that this defies the laws of physics you know we see circular systems that become flat we see monster systems that are tapping into the moisture coming off of the equatorial belt there's but these systems are then way up in the northern hemisphere and reaching literally reaching down to the equatorial belt grabbing the water here's one place over Central America where the water is being pulled off the equator and sent to the Arctic simply amazing and when these southern vortexes uh, get in the right positions there are days on planet earth where there is no equatorial belt of water which is unheard of at least in the old days but now we're looking at new normals so um, thank you for your concerns uh, just an announcement uh, my phone numbers changed for a lot of people I will be getting back to you sorry if you've been trying to get a hold of me um, but you know things are pretty crazy we had to maintain a low profile on the travels I, you know feel very very vulnerable when I travel so um, so we were trying to you know set up routes you know publicly set up routes over the cell phone and then at the last second change the plans and take a different route um, you know going into airplane airplane mode uh, on your phone uh, wrapping the phone in foil or a foil pouch um, really trying to stay under the radar using cash to pay for your gas those are things kind of just you know make it feel at least feel like you're you're not so <laughs> obvious about your travels uh, and I, I like I like doing that I, I like behaving that way I like feeling like um, I'm not leaving a smoke trail and a trail of crumbs but I've also toned down my rhetoric I've also backed off on some of the topics and and my audience is very small now so I'm no threat to anybody but um, enjoy uh, the weekend to come I want you to understand that we are going to be doing these weather satellites daily you know and keep updating you on globally on what's happening um, we're going to take some pieces of very very popular videos and we're going to just take some things that got a lot of attention and and devote some time to those one of those is antibody test uh, that pretty much vindicates dr judy m m uh, a former employee of the ni you know what we want to we want to really um really come to her um rescue 
and because she comes under attack and show you an actual lab test that confirms that her conspiracy theory that somehow some of these shots have been contaminated with a retrovirus are absolutely 100 percent true and have impacted tens of thousands of people long before this covid had ever come to light until next time be prepared not scared